Coming up next on YCU News, New Hampshire Governor Maggie Hassan requests a special legislative session in Concord next month. New Hampshire plans to help government employees keep their jobs in spite of the shutdown. And two New Hampshire residents are charged with stealing nearly $100,000 in jewelry from a residential home. For more news, weather, and sports, it's time for YCU, your local view. Now, your daily digest of the Dartmouth Lake Sunapee region and central Vermont. News, sports, weather, public affairs, and all that's happening in our area. The news on YCU, your local view. Good evening, I'm Rose Spillman. Thank you for joining us for this Tuesday edition of YCU News. New Hampshire Governor Maggie Hassan is requesting a special legislative session in Concord next month. Hassan said today that she will ask the Executive Council to support calling state lawmakers back into session November 7th through the 21st. Hassan's request follows a bipartisan report recommending the state accept $2.5 billion in federal funds to expand Medicaid. If the state accepts federal funds, more uninsured New Hampshire residents would be able to afford health insurance. Subsidies would help low-income residents pay a portion of their health insurance costs. The federal subsidies would last for three years and be fully funded. After that, federal funds would cover 90% of these insurance costs. The five-member Executive Council meets Wednesday. The Executive Council represents citizens who live in each of the councilors' respective districts. Lawmakers in Washington, D.C. are still at odds with each other, and the federal government shutdown continues. In New Hampshire, though, plans are underway to help state employees funded by some federal programs to keep their jobs. Governor Maggie Hassan and the State Employees Association are under agreement to allow furloughs instead of layoffs for these workers. Hassan calls the federal government shutdown as senseless and an act affecting New Hampshire families and the state's economy. Hassan and State Employees Association President Diana Lacey work together to find a local solution to the national problem. Furloughs would at least allow these employees to keep their jobs even as they are not paid for their work. A Northfield, Vermont educator is the state's teacher of the year. Northfield Middle School teacher Luke Foley is the teacher chosen from among 49 nominations. Foley and two other teachers were named finalists for the 2014 award a week ago. Vermont Education Secretary Armando Villaseca made the announcement this morning in Montpelier. Foley teaches students in an alternative education program at the Northfield Middle High School. Also honored today were the two other finalists, Katie Farber, a grade 6 teacher at Romney Memorial School in Middlesex, and Valerie Gasco, a special education teacher at Riverside Middle School in Springfield, Vermont. Two New Hampshire residents charged with five counts of jewelry theft were scheduled to be arraigned today. 24-year-old Richard Fortier Jr. of Keene and 25-year-old Stephanie Vary of Webster allegedly stole jewelry valued between $75 and $100,000 from a private residence in Wilmot, New Hampshire. On October 10th, New Hampshire State Police received a report of cash and jewelry stolen from the Wilmot home. Police learned that several items were brought to a local jeweler for possible sale. The alert jeweler said something was not right with the proposed sale, say police. The jeweler, whom police did not name in a press release, notified police after Fortier had left the store. When Fortier returned to the store the next day, he was arrested by state and local police. Fortier is charged with five counts of receiving stolen property. Working with the Concord Police Department, the investigation led to the arrest of Vary. Vary was arrested at the jewelry store, police report. She is charged with criminal conduct, liability for another for her role. Troopers went to a local hotel room and found cash, illicit drugs, and drug paraphernalia. After the arrest and before the arraignments, Fortier was being held on $100,000 cash bail. Ferry was held on $25,000 cash bail. Now we have the YCU weather forecast for the Connecticut River Valley and Lake Senapee region. Tomorrow we have a high of 63 degrees and lows in the 50s. Thursday may bring a few showers in the morning with highs in the mid-60s and a low of 46. 
Friday we have temperatures around 61 degrees and a low of 40. Saturday and Sunday will be slightly cooler with highs around 57 degrees and lows in the upper 30s. If you're already planning for the weekend, check out the third annual New Hampshire Festival of Community Bands in New London this Saturday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Outing Club. Now it's time for our YCU Game of the Week. Last Friday was a beautiful night for the annual Principal's Cup between host Hanover and nearby rival Lebanon. The Raiders were fired up before the game, trying to reverse a long losing streak to Hanover. After forcing Hanover to punt on their first possession, Lebanon's Austin Pelletier returned the punt 44 yards to give Lebanon great field position. A 33-yard field goal gave Lebanon the early lead. Later in the first quarter, reserve quarterback Joe Flanagan, number 43, hits number 88, Austin Pelletier, for this 80-yard touchdown pass to give the Raiders a 10-0 lead. Following an interception by Lucas Giroux, Lebanon's number 24, Nevin Kapazinski, sprints 93 yards to put the Raiders on top 17-0. Lebanon running back Nevin Kapazinski rushed for 136 yards on nine carries for the game. In the second quarter, Hanover's quarterback Sean Cavallero gets the Marauders on the board, much to the delight of the Hanover fans. At halftime, the Hanover youth football 7th and 8th grade and the 4th, 5th, and 6th grade teams were honored at midfield. In the second half, Hanover's Sean Cavallero sprints 27 yards to cut the Lebanon lead to 27-15. to A late game field goal by Lebanon's Grayson Hardy, his third of the game, finished off the scoring as Lebanon wins 30-14, to winning its second Principals Cup in the last decade. The 2-4 Raiders travel to Laconia this Friday, while 1-5 Hanover visits Merrimack Valley also on Friday night. Here's a look at some of our local high school sports scores. I'm Rose Spillman for YCU, your local view. Good night.